Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And we've got the usual suspects, all the usual suspects for today's roundtable. And I'm going to do something a little bit different on this roundtable, just so we can get to the meat quicker, because we have such a good topic. I'll just quickly introduce everybody. Eric Peterson is here. Hi, Eric. Hi. The dude buddy, not Cap OG, Scott Boston. Hey, Scott. Hey, Mark. We got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, good. The Zen master, Mike Zeno, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. How are you, Mike? How are you? If you're listening to this on one and a half times speed, it's going really fast. Tate Litchfield, I love it when you call me Big Papa. How are you? Doing well. Happy to be on. Good to see you. Last but not least, you love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. Landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. What's up, Scott? Mark, how's it going? Good. Okay, let's go. So the question (laughs) today for the roundtable, is the land business for everyone? Let's start with Eric, the technician Peterson. Eric, what do you think? Look, I think that the land business we talk about, it's easy for the most part. You follow the recipe. There's certain steps that you take. And um, the reality is anybody could do it, but I don't think it's for anybody. And the reason is, um, you know, I think that in this business, first of all, on the starting side of things, it takes consistent effort over time. So if you don't have the desire or the wherewithal to make consistent efforts over time, and over time, I mean probably at least three to six months to start building something up, then I think you're gonna be disappointed, you're gonna find yourself frustrated, and you're gonna feel like, you know, this isn't for you. Um, So, you know, while anybody could do it, I don't think it's for everybody. Okay. I like it. So essentially, if you have very low frustration tolerance, not for you, is that what you're saying? Or is it just you have not very low results tolerance? Like you need to have results real fast. Like and you don't have it and you don't, and you don't see it right away and you get frustrated, it's not for you. Certainly that, that could be a scenario, right? Because it can take time to see results. But I think what, what I'm trying to get at is just the idea that you have to be consistent in this business over time to see results. So, so take the next three months, six months, nine months, whatever it is, and devote an hour or two a day to build this business. If you can't do that consistently, if you can't get your ads out on the marketing side, if you can't get your mail out, on the acquisition side, you know, you're going to find yourself frustrated and, and ready to give up, you know, at some point during that process. So um, to see results, you need to be consistent. Okay. I love it. I rarely agree with you, Eric Peterson, but I 100% agree with everything you just said. Uh, dude, buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, is this land business for everyone in your opinion? Uh, I think it's for most people. Um, If you can follow a recipe, it's for you. Uh, If you go into it with realistic expectations, sometimes I talk to people on the phone and they're, they're looking to get rich quick. Uh, It's, it's not for you. Mark, you told me five years ago, I'm coming up on my five year anniversary, by the way, next, next week, July 3rd. Uh, This is not get rich quick. Yeah. Not get rich quick. It's, It's get rich slow. And so you need to be realistic in that regard. And like Eric said, it takes really consistent work. You can't dabble and walk away for a week or two at a time. Uh, So consistency, uh, realistic expectations, um, and uh, following a recipe. And in, in my opinion, you do need some modest computer skills or you need to be open to learning how to use the computer. Uh, And, um, Anyway, but, but it's a great time because you can learn anything on YouTube, right? So, so that's my, my take on it all, I guess. Yeah, I, I agree with almost everything you said. I don't think you need to have computer skills. I think you need to be able to go to a, a web browser and type right. in fiverr.com 
and then do a quick search for whatever tech thing you need and then have the wherewithal to do use that site essentially. So I guess it, you do need to have some basic tech. I skills. disagree with you on that one, Mark, but we'll, I'll, I'll waste my disagreement later, I guess. I mean, are we getting into it right now, Scott Todd? We I mean, you know, it's meaning. not, it really isn't as simple as, oh, let me just go over to Fiverr and hire somebody. Okay. Like it, the, you, you need to be able to like do some things that on your own that you just can't be dependent on somebody else. Right. Like, you can't be dependent on somebody else. You got to have some ability. Like you got to be able to like know how to send an email. You need to know like how to like not, not, not be an Excel whiz, but like you got to, you do have to know like when you open up Excel, what you're looking at. Okay. Like it sells, you got to have some fundamental concept or as Eric said, the ability to get, or I'm sorry, Scott Boston said the ability to get it right. Like you just can't, you got to know what you're looking at. So it's not like, here, let me just give everything to fiber. No way. Okay. Well, I'm going to go, I'm going to make the assumption that if you even found us, you have basic computer skills. It's not like you saw, Oh, earn <laughs> passive income on the billboard in Tampa. And then you're like, I'm going to call this 800 number and learn how to get passive income. You had to find us online. So I'm assuming if you're even talking to the guys, you're even finding us, you're even listening to this freaking podcast, you have basic computer skills. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. Let's, let's go to somebody who has something important to say. <laughs> Mimi Schmidt, the, the terrorist hunter. What do you think, Mimi? Is the land business for everyone? I think that there are qualities that definitely make people more likely to succeed, right? I don't, I, I think it's for most people, but not for everybody. I think that you have to have patience because just like the guys are saying, it does take time, perseverance and grit. You have to be comfortable pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. By entrepreneurs, that's what entrepreneurs do, right? A lot of people need to have that safety and security of a paycheck, right? So until you've built your passive income up so that you can get rid of your job and have a passive income that's stable, you're just going to have to be open to that uh, variability in your passive income, right? Or keep your job. So that's my thing. I like it. The, the, P and grit. the PPG, Scott Todd. If it was Scott, <laughs> if it was Scott Todd, if it was Scott Todd, starting to be like, it's the PPGS. Patience, <laughs> perseverance, perseverance, grit, and a surface, which I completely disagree with. <laughs> Don't you don't need it. You don't need to be a surface to be in this land business. Don't need a surface. Um, no. You do need to be able to know how to send an email. Just saying. I, but if you're even listening to the podcast, you have basic computer skills. You have an email. You found us online. Okay, Mark. Like it's a okay. digital world. Okay. All right. Anyways, let's let's go to somebody a little calmer. Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, is the land business for everyone? Well, that's a great question. I do think everybody has the capability to do it, but I'll tell you one thing that if you're not willing to make mistakes, if you're sort of a perfectionist, right? And you're gonna beat yourself up when you make mistakes, maybe this isn't for you because you know we fail forward here. We learn from our mistakes. And uh, I think that a very wise surface user once said, done beats perfect. So, um, uh, Scott Todd, for all you listeners who don't know who that is. Um, so done, done beats perfect. You can't, you, you just can't be a perfectionist with this business. And if you're going to be a perfectionist and beat yourself up, uh, it's going to be tough, right? You know, you have to be willing to make the mistakes. And, but fortunately I do have a phrase that helps you to, uh, you know, realize the real importance of this business. And thanks to Mark McWiggins, I now have a shirt that shows you. Deal Come on. Solves Deal everything. Flow solves hey. everything. Mark See McWiggins. That? I love it. <laughs> so ultimately, you know, deal flow don't solve everything, meaning that, you know, you're going to get better each time. You're not going to be perfect. And then eventually, uh, I don't know, something you guys said reminded me of the all powerful and wise Kenny Rogers. You'll know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. <laughs> and know when to buy a surface. 
<laughs> All right, it's getting lively. It's getting lively. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, first of all, does Deal Flow solve everything? And is the land business for everyone? Yes, Deal Flow solves any problem because it takes that weight off you, right? Once once you get a abundance of accepted offers, it's like, whew, this business works and I can pick and choose. And once you get a bunch of, you know, people inquiring about your land for sale, you can relax and you don't have to chase the deals. So yeah, deal flow solves everything. Is the land business for everyone? Originally I said no. Now I'm leaning towards yes. And I think it is for everybody. I think that, yeah, like Scott says, you do need to know how to send an email. But if you don't, we've got flight school. And Scott's going to teach you pretty much all of the basics required for this business. Now, the thing is, this business. Stop, stop, no, stop, stop. You stop, can do stop, it, stop. Scott. Listen, <laughs> flight school, flight school will teach you a lot. What it will not teach you is like the basics of using a computer, like email. Uh, like, okay, like that's Scott. what Investor Ninjas is for, Obviously, but not. Scott. Not flight school, man. Well, obviously, you got to know how to use a computer. But don't you remember, Scott? Them. Scott would spend the first fifteen minutes of my coaching calls getting me on Zoom. It was yeah. painful. That poor man. <sighs> it was so painful. What I'm getting at is, flight school will teach you the techie side. Like, if you need to learn how to use a county we or website, he's going to walk you through what a county re website looks like. You need to look at a GIS. He's going to show you what that looks like. So the tools that we use in the land business are not that complicated, right? These are, these are everyday serv services. And most of the time, they're pretty straightforward. LG Pass, it's about as Mac friendly, you know, it's kind of designed like that. Like you click one button, it takes you to the next page, et cetera, et cetera. So the software is not tricky. If you can use a computer, you know, if you can handle an iPhone, you can do this business. It's just a matter of can you persevere the dips and they do come. Everybody, everybody experiences them. So we have had coaching clients who, uh, you know, did everything old school pen and paper wise, and they still made a ton of money in this business. You know, doesn't mean that you have to be computer literate or as smart as Eric when it comes to zaps, but, uh, you know, Investor ninja, Ninjas is out there to help you. And uh, when you're in coaching, you can pick Eric's brain all the time for that kind of help. I just, I just love the way Tate is literally having Scott and Tate, Scott and Eric volunteer for you. Any tech problem you have. Listen, oh. these, guys, these guys can solve it. That's why, you know, it's Eric Peterson. Like that guy has yeah. everything zapped in his whole life. Scott Todd, I mean, despite the, the surface usage, he is really, really techy. And the software that we have set up makes the land business so easy if you yeah, just if stick through it. Yeah, if you're listening to this, by the way, you can just disregard Tate volunteering those guys' tech services for you. All you need to do is go to YouTube, do a search, or go to Google and do a search and learn some basic tech skills. But if you start emailing Scott Todd- Oh, they're not gonna respond. Yeah, don't expect anything. There is, there's definitely a new Investor Ninja email. course by Eric Peterson. What is right. Excel and how to use it for the land business? You can go there. Don't email those guys directly for tech help. That I have not laughed that hard since Tiger King. <laughs> that was classic. But you should email Scott Todd just, just to bug him anyways. I mean, Scott, what did you do to Tate? I, I don't know. I don't know. Shots I mean, are fired. It's not, it's not, it's listen, it's not like I revealed the secret that if you're in Vegas, he'll take you to lunch. I didn't, I didn't tell anybody that publicly, like not that I know of, seriously, like you're in Vegas, call him up. He'll take, he'll take everybody to lunch, man. He, he'll take you on a ride with him. You can look over his shoulder. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay. Look over his shoulder. He'll go to eat lunch with him. He'll buy you. He's such a nice guy. He'll even buy you lunch. Like, that's a great idea for a raffle at boot camp. Uh, they would take Litchfield in Vegas. I absolutely Listen, agree. They would yeah. be bored out of their mind because I don't do very much in a day. But, you know, you know I'm a nice guy. I'm, 
I have an abundance mentality, Scott. So yeah, come on, hit me okay. up. All right. I'm bored. You heard, you heard Tate. Call him up. You're in Vegas. Call him up. You, hey, and if you need his box, let me know. Or his cell phone number. I'll get that to you. <laughs> All right. So, so, so Scott, let's get back to the original question. Is the land business for everyone? Okay, Mark. I mean, everybody's got some good points here, right? Like, is it for everybody? Well, anybody can do it. But I think that the people that are successful in doing it, they, they all have one common thing. And that is that they have a burning desire to change the life that they're, that they're living, right? Like that, that's the, that is the, the absolute fundamental key to success. And it's not just in this business, it's literally in everything. When you're, when you're not, um, when, when you have some pain in your life, whatever it is, whether it's your job, you hate your job, you, whatever, that pain and it, it's pain will lead you to find the pleasure. And when you're dealing with pain in something else, like, I don't know, let's pick on a job, for example, you hate your job, you can't stand your boss, you can't stand sitting in a, in a cubicle, whatever it is, you hate it so much that you will go through pain of something else to get rid of this other pain because it's terrible, right? Like we, we move away from pain as humans. We always do. So ultimately, if, you, if you're trying to like solve a problem, you're like, passive income. Yeah, I want passive income. But you know what? You have to be with your job. You're like, I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm making lots of money. Well, I'm not saying that you won't find success, but it's not that priority, right? Like it's like what, what becomes a priority in your life versus, man, I got to replace my income. I got to stop doing this. And look, it, it's really that burning desire that, that I'm talking about that will lead you to the success that you want. Because as everybody pointed out, there's a lot of stuff here that you're going to have to do. Remember, you're starting a business. This is a, the land investing business. So you're starting a business. And what we've talked about before, you're going to have to wear multiple hats. You're going to have to be the CEO. You're going to have to be the task worker. You're going to have to be the CFO. You have to be the the uh the the janitor like you got you have to do everything in the beginning and then you start to put in the pieces to get out of the work but you still have to do the work right like in the beginning you're carrying it eric said six months to a year you're carrying it mimi carried it for three years okay she did it she you know she slowly got rid of it but she, she was doing she was doing the heavy lifting and yeah you got to do the heavy lifting so is it for everybody anybody can have success here. Is it for everybody? Well, you have to decide, like, is this really, are you going to put in the, the blood, sweat, and tears to move the needle in your life? And I think only you can answer that question. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I love that answer. I, I think that's, that is the fundamental piece of it is the burning desire. And then up from there, as we go up, we go into the PPG, the patience, the persistence, the grit, which reinforces the burning desire. So you've got that burning desire. You just remember, okay, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be persistent. I'm going to be consistent, like what Eric said. I'm going to have grit when things are tough because my burning desire is, is that raw. And then I'm going to go up the mountain even further. I'm going to go, okay, deal flow solves everything. I just got to get my deal flow going. And so I think what everybody said is really important and, um, and so true. So Getting back to the original question, is the land business for everyone? Yeah, anyone can do it. But basically, if you don't have that burning desire to transform your life, then it's probably not worth going through the motions, you know, for pick up tennis. It's easier, you know, something like that. I don't know. Join a, join a, a book club. That'll be a little easier. Won't change your life, but it'll be fun something like that. Anyways, we are now at that point where we're going to pick on Mimi Schmidt, the terrorist hunter, and get the tip of the week. But before we do that, I just want to remind everybody that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. I'm going to assume that you have some basic tech skills. And number two, you have a burning desire to transform your life and start building a passive income machine. The only piece that is missing is the training the how-to, and the best way to learn is by doing work the business in real time 
with your Sherpa, Scott Todd. Go up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently. Learn more. Get on a call with the Zen Master Mike Zeno, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. And one final announcement I'm very excited about. The first Land Geek virtual boot camp is ready to go. We are taking registration now. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp and register. You've got to have the toolkit. You got to be in flight school. But if you have those things, you can register. If you don't, then get on a call, figure out how to get those things so you get your two free tickets to the first Land Geek virtual boot camp. It is going to be epic. Epic. I promise. So, um, Mimi Schmidt, what is your tip of the week? I, well, I'm curious now. Is there a time set yet for the virtual boot camp? I'm really excited. It is. It's August 7th. We're going to start at 8 in the morning. It will be registration. So, if you're, let's say you don't have Scott Todd Ninja Tech Skills, that first hour is just going to be practicing on Zoom how to raise your hand, um, you know. How, how to use the technology. And then we're going to start officially at 9 a.m. Awesome. And we'll be going through the same itinerary that we do at, at live boot camp, except that it will be virtual. There will be only one small change. And other than that, we'll, it will just wow. be virtual. I'm excited. Okay. So my tip of the week came from a conversation that I was having with a coach right before the call. So not only in Facebook do you need to be aware of the community standards, there are also commerce policies. What I'm finding more and more is, is if you have uh, financing, seller financing, or terms, a lot of terms information in your ads, they think it sounds spammy and they don't like it. Okay, so um, make sure you know the community standards, but make sure you've read through these commerce policies also, because they'll kick you out of marketplace too for these. And it's not like it's the gambling discrimination. You know, those aren't the kinds of things that we're worried about more. We're more worried about number 15, for instance, being considered um, misleading or deceptive, that type of thing. Uh, and that's where the financing comes in, so financing wording, but um Good luck. I did. I have had a lot of questions in about Facebook marketing lately about location. Um, make sure you're erasing the location that they have in there that they automatically fill. And uh, two to four hours away from the property, the big cities are generally where, but you don't have to limit yourself to that. I've sold property to people here in Washington, D.C. that's out west. So. All right. Awesome. If you want to learn exactly and watch in real time how Mimi actually markets on Facebook. She's going to have that module at boot camp, sharing her screen. It's going to be awesome. So um, I think that's a really good tip and uh, a way to not look like we're spammy on Facebook and get our, our ads posted there. Um, just real quickly, how is everybody's land business? Has, has there been any, any dip with COVID Eric? No, there's been a huge increase. Huge increase. Uh, Mimi? I'm going on a vacation the end of July. I'm going to sit out at the beach like I told Scott Todd when he started coaching me. I finally get to do it because the last two months have been good. All right, great. Uh, dude, buddy? Uh, it's been very good the last three months, yes. Mike? Uh, the same. Yes, very good. This is a great time to be in this business. Tate, any, any dips? Uh, no, actually. Uh, I did get a notice from one of our note buyers or our, our note payers that he uh, was arrested for peaceful protest. So he's going to be late this month on his payment. But <laughs> other than that, uh, it's a really good time to be in the land business. All right. Scott Todd? No, good. Great, great, great time. Right. Things are going great. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners for putting up with our shenanigans on this week's roundtable. And if you are getting value, and hopefully you are, the three biggest favors you can do us do for us is subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send for free the $97 wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. All right. Are we ready to do this? Yes, sir. <clears throat> One, two, three. 
three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. Not bad. So um, props to Scott Bossman for coming on in the midst of covid he is positive for covid and so if you're listening to this you can't close you're that. safe it's HIPAA. social distancing it's HIPAA. you can't do that <laughs> well, he's not a, he's if, not listen a, if tate can offer your, your tech attorney. services i can i can <laughs> offer up publicly scott's you know health status you just violated a federal law on a podcast now I'm we have not, to delete this doctor. whole thing yeah mark's not a, a, a I, I have no i'm not hipaa compliant this is the Passive Income Podcast. Can't talk about stuff like that without his disclosure. Did you get that in writing? Did okay. Mark get my disclosure or didn't he? I don't why, know. Why, why, why would that be something Either he'd be ashamed way. of, by the way? Why, why would he be something like you Look don't tell? Look how good he looks. Look how yeah. good he looks being sick. I know. I was going to say, amazing. He's, he's I'm upright. kicking COVID's butt. I'm upright. I did, kick, I did kick its butt, I will have to say. I don't know how I got it. You know what, though? I, uh, people are getting it. It doesn't, I mean, I mask up, I socially distance. Uh, I'm a good steward in that regard and I got it. So I don't know, just be, be wary. It, it happens. It's going to happen. I have family members getting it, uh, back in South Dakota. It's uh, it's not going in a good direction anyway. You know, it could be a thing in Wisconsin where everybody was like, Hey, you know, it's summer. Let's go get some beers. Let's go get some brats. We'll wear our masks. And yet they oh. thought, well, the beers are going to keep us safe. And, and they didn't. Well, that's no doubt what happened. I'm sure of it. Wow. Yes. Yeah. The Supreme, uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court said, go do those things. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure no, I mean, fine. yeah, I mean, there, look, there is an argument that says, hey, you know, when it's your time, it's your time. Go drink some beer. Yeah, Summer, right. Wisconsin. Yep. I hear now I'm, go, like I'm going out. As soon as, as soon as I'm done with this 14-day quarantine, I'm, I'm, a, I'm out at the bar. I mean, happy yeah. hour, drinks. I'm good. All right. I mean, it would be safer to just do virtual nightcap with Mike and, and Fortune 500. That would be course. safer. It's a lot safer. We'll definitely Even, continue you know, that trend. I'm yeah, all for, for boot sure. camp, like real live boot camp. Let's get on an airplane and go somewhere. Yeah, see, now that's where I draw the line. I don't think we should be getting together in big groups. Oh, yeah. Those masks are great on an airplane. You want to take a nap? You just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> you got your own eye cover. Which, which le yeah, which leads us to the question to Tate. Do you recline now with a mask? Oh, absolutely. Why would I change anything, Mark? Oh, yeah. There's plenty of room. Well, yeah. Don't they space it out now? Like there's nobody yeah. behind you or something? They say that they're doing that, but I saw a video of like a 100% packed airplane with everybody in the middle seats and everything. So I think they're telling us what we want to hear, but if they can sell seats, they're taking the money. No, nope. United will make their announcement tomorrow or Thursday. It's coming out. All the big wow. cuts. Oof. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you guys are okay. Yeah, we'll see. But um, I, I will say that up. you're trending up. trending up. And then Arizona and Texas, the people weren't wearing their masks, and now it's. I know we're we're in epicenter. I'm I'm getting out of here for July. Good. I'm going to be in Colorado. Uh, I know Eric's getting out of Tennessee. He's going he's going to the lake. Uh, yep. Tate's in Idaho. I'm gone. He's gone. I'm already gone. Uh, Scott Todd flies wherever he wants. So now the question is for, you know, you three, where are you guys going? Mimi, what are you doing for July? I'm going to St. John's. They don't even have a hospital on the island. I'm a little scared. I know. I have to take some thermometers. Yeah, you'll be fine. You're good, good <laughs> I health. know. That'll be fun, though. Yeah, I'm excited. Um. You're beating hurricane season, right? It's not hurricane season. That's good. Um, what about you, Zen Master? I'm gonna chill from here, right where we live. There's a uh, pond nearby. Laura bought a uh, uh, bought me a uh, big paddleboard with two seats. She paddles me around. I caught a couple bass this morning, Tate. Uh, so that's it. I'm just gonna spend time getting paddled around the lake fishing. 
that's that's the way to do it right there the nice it. and then dude buddy when you're recovered out of quarantine we don't have a ton planned. We may go back to uh, South Dakota where my parents live. They have a lake cabin and uh, maybe hang out there for a week with uh, the dog and the boys. Very nice. Very nice. Well, I'll be missing all of you for the month and the listeners as well. We'll be back live in August. So this the month of July, we'll be doing our best of roundtable podcasts. And uh, I'm sure, you know, I'll be jumping on from time to time. And... Uh, you know, doing a, like a live something from Colorado because I got teenagers and they're going to be sleeping till noon. So I'll bike to the coffee shop and bother you guys and just check in with the community. I don't know. So Tate's already got that look like I'm not picking up that call. <laughs> yeah. And now, now I know Mimi, you know, she'll be uh, on the beach. So she's not picking up that call. Eric will be on the lake. He's not picking up that call. Uh, Mike's on the lake. He's not picking up that call. So it looks like it's just up to Bossman and Scott Todd. Thanks, guys, for being there. Always. <laughs> Scott Todd just looked up. He's like, what, what? what are you guys talking about? Uh-huh. No, no, it's all good. Are, are you planning lunch, Scott? Or, or actually, <laughs> wait, not lunch. The, uh, you had lunch, the afternoon banana. I already ate that, man. I ate that. <laughs> Okay. Is it, oh, is it one one donut and all fruit? Is that how it works? No, 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 no. I almost no. figured it out. I, I, it away. Listen, we're not talking about this until the book is released. <laughs> not doing it. Look. The, yeah, whiskey, it might be the shortest person, book ever beer. written. But, I mean, you know, could, could be huge. One donut, three slices of pineapple, and a cucumber. Ah, uh, 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 no, no, it's not that at all. Not that at all. No, we're not talking about this. In fact, uh, I just got a notification that uh, uh, apparently two dozen donuts has arrived at my door. I don't know. Oh, man. no way. Yeah, yes. some some prankster. It's not a prank. Tay, Tay, Tay will experience. Tay will experience these pranksters soon enough when they come out to Vegas and they call him on his phone. Like, hey, hey Scott said you could have lunch with me. You, if you show up to my door with two dozens of donuts, you're getting in, guaranteed. You're getting in. <laughs> What's the secret word? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Mike. Uh, Tay didn't learn from from messing with me and like from your experience, did he? I can't even talk about that right now. I'm still, All right, that no. was a very bad, wait, I get gun shy when you even mention it. Why do I, I get gun shy even mention it? Jeez. You, sw- you sweat now? Cake. I, got, Me? I feel no. like I just came down with something. Jeez. <laughs> now my dog's barking. All right. Here we go. Unreal. All right. Well, everybody have a great July and uh, see everyone in a month. Thanks, everybody. Oh, man. Thanks, Carl. Be safe out there.